Now let's talk about the trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. And this is based on a lecture by Dr. David Turner at Rush University Department of Radiology. And the idea here is that for a given test, you have to set a threshold level, a level above which you're going to call a test positive and below which you're going to call it negative. And where you set that uh, affects the sensitivity and specificity. So you could set it so that it increases the sensitivity, but that is going to decrease the specificity and vice versa. If you set it to increase the specificity, then it's going to decrease the sensitivity. So let's take a look at this. So what we're going to plot is the test value against the number of patients uh, who have that value. So let's say for this given test, the, the values are between 0 and 100. So let's say you run this test on patients who don't have the disease. And you get a histogram uh, that looks something like this. So what this means here is that uh, most of the people are going to be somewhere around 26, uh, but not everybody. Some people will be closer to zero. Some people might be like 45. But these are people who don't have the disease. So they don't have the disease. Now let's say we run this same test on people who do have the disease. And then you get a distribution that looks something like this. And so now you could see that test was about I don't know, 80 for people who have the disease. That was about the mean. And it was about as low as like uh, 55 and it went almost up to 100. It went up to 100 there. So these are the patients that do have the disease. So if we had to pick a level above which we would say the patients do have the disease and below which they don't have the disease, in this case it's pretty easy. You set the cutoff at 50, and values that are greater than 50, those patients have the disease. And for values less than 50, they don't have the disease. And so this would be a pretty good test, because you can see pretty much everyone who tests positive has a disease, and pretty much everyone who tests negative doesn't have the disease. But of course, life is never this easy, and no test is ever this good. Life is usually a lot messier than that, and usually there's going to be some overlap. No test is as perfect as the one I showed you first. There are probably going to be some overlap. There's biological vari variability between patients. No test is perfect, so there's lots of times where you'll see some, the curves like this, where if you tested all the negative patients, you would get this distribution. And if you tested all the patients with disease, you would get this kind of distribution. So you still need to set a place where you're going to have a threshold where you're going to call the value above which it's positive and below which is negative. So let's set that at around the same spot. So I set the, set, the, th set the threshold around 50 again. My drawing's not perfect, so it didn't come out there, but let's just say it's about 50. And then everything on this side of the line we're going to call positive, and everything on this side we're going to call tests negative. So what does that mean? First, let's take a look at this curve here, the green one, the one of the patients with disease. So this area here under this curve, these are patients who have disease and who have tested positive. So these are our true positives. Now these patients here, they also have disease, but they tested negative. So these are our false negatives. Okay, so now let's look at the patients who don't have the disease. Let's look at this other curve here. Now these patients here, these are patients who don't have disease, who tested negative. So these are our true negatives. And then these patients here are patients who don't have the disease, but unfortunately they tested positive. So these are our false positives. So now that you're kind of oriented to how this thing works, let's compare it to our 2 by 2 table that we had before. Now you'll remember at the top we had the disease status, so this column is has disease, this one is doesn't have disease. And down here we have the row for a positive test and the row for a negative test. So this box corresponds to people who have the disease and test positive. So that's everything that's colored 
green over here. Now, this box over here are people who test positive but don't have the disease. And that corresponds to the area with the pink hash marks. So over here, these are patients who test positive but don't have the disease. This area, the negative test, and yet they do have the disease, it's this, the orange hash marks. And then by process of elimination, you know the patients who test negative and also don't have the disease is this area here, the true negatives. So what is sensitivity? Sensitivity is the percentage of or the proportion of patients who have the disease who get a positive test. And so in this case, it's how much of this curve is colored green underneath and not with this orange hash mark. So how can we improve the sensitivity of this test? Well, if we set our threshold lower, let's say we moved it over here. So by moving this threshold down this way, we've put more of this green curve on the positive side of the line and less of it over here. We could do even better. Let's move this thing all the way over. So by moving our cutoff value even further to the left, we've put everything on this side of the line and very little on this side, actually nothing there. And if we take this to the ultimate extreme here by moving it all over here, the sensitivity is just perfect. Look, everything, everyone that has a disease is picked up and tests positive. So the sensitivity here is 100%. So why don't we just do this? Why not just make our test, uh, move our threshold all the way down here so that we could pick up everyone and get 100% sensitivity? Well, the trade-off we've done here is by saying that, by moving this all the way down here, we call almost no one negative. Basically what this test is saying is everybody's positive, right? And that's what we see here. Even a great deal of the patients who should have tested negative are also being called positive. And so what we've done here is we've lost the ability to distinguish between patients who do have the disease and patients who don't have the disease. So this is essentially useless. We're just saying everybody's positive. You walk through the door, you're positive. You don't even really have to do the test, just call them positive, just for showing up. Now let's look at specificity. So it's basically the same thing except we're looking at the other curve. So specificity means how many, how much of this curve of patients who don't have the disease is going to be truly negative, or blue in this case. What proportion, what percentage of this curve is going to test negative, is going to be on this side of the line? And so in this case, we'd say maybe, you know, it's about 80% of it is under this line, and 20% of it is not. This is our true negative area, and this is our false positive area. So how can we improve the specificity? Well, what if we move this threshold line over some? So as we moved our cutoff value for what is positive, this side, versus what is negative, over to the right, we see that our specificity increases. We have a greater proportion of this curve uh, on the left side of this line. Now we could take this to the extreme again and move this all the way over here. So by moving this cutoff threshold all the way to the right, we're really increasing the specificity. We're really increasing the proportion of the curve of patients, the uh, histogram of the patients who don't have this disease. We're really putting a lot of them on the proper side of this threshold line. But what we're essentially doing here is we're just saying, look, everybody who gets this test is negative. This test is again useless because you don't even have to give it. Just anyone who walks through the door say, yeah, your test is negative. So now let's look at them both together. So here again is our curves with the true positive area here being all of this. This is the false negative. And so this proportion here is the sensitivity. This is our true negative portion here with this being the false positive. So this proportion underneath the curve is our specificity. If we move our threshold in this direction, what we have done is increase the amount of the patients who don't have the disease on the negative side of the line. So we've increased the specificity, but at what cost? 
look what we've done to the sensitivity. We've decreased the amount of patients who do have the disease that treat, that test positive. So by increasing our cutoff value, we've increased specificity, but at the cost of a decreasing sensitivity. Similarly, if we move our threshold in the other direction, so by moving our cutoff this way, look what we've done. We have increased the number of patients who are going to test positive properly. That is, we've increased the sensitivity. But at what cost? We've decreased the specificity. We're going to have a greater proportion here of patients who are false positives, right? We're going to have less patients who uh, test properly negatively. I mean, these are true negatives. We have less true negatives. And so this is the point here. There is a cost. Uh, there is a trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. As you move this cutoff value back and forth, you're going to increase one and decrease the other. So you need to come to a compromise. You need to come to, a, to find a place where there's a balance. And that will depend on the situation. Maybe in this case, you say, well, I want to make sure I catch as many people who do have the disease because missing the disease, it's horrible and it can have some bad consequences. But I know I'm going to accept the fact that I'm going to get some people who do not have the disease and call them positive as well. And so you'd say, well, the treating people who don't have the disease, it's not such a bad thing but missing people who do have the disease is a bad thing. In this case, you'd want your cutoff over here. Conversely, if you set the, cut, the cutoff over here, what you are saying is, it is more important that I find the patients who do not have the disease. And the price for that is I'm going to have some false negatives, so I'm going to be sending home some patients who don't have the disease, that who do have the disease and calling them negative. So this might be a scenario where the treatment is something that's maybe very invasive or very expensive, uh, and missing the disease and not treating them doesn't necessarily have such big consequences. Okay, so this is the trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. We're going to take this a little bit further and go into ROC curves in a little bit using these same graphs. All right, if you have any questions, please put them below in the comments or ask. Thanks, bye.